very much like the way that this Russian tactical armor is obviously false. All the other things about the Russian military ought to be taken with a huge grain of salt. While the vest looks strong, it unquestionably doesn't hold up when it's put to the genuine test. In any case, why accept everything that a YouTube channel is saying to you, when you can catch wind of efficient untruths and defilement inside the Russian military, directly from early evening Russian public television? In an uncommon eruption on November 11th, Vladimir Solovyov, an unmistakable anchor on the state-claimed Russia One station, let it all out, discussing the untruths that the Russian military has been taking cover behind, from the base to the exceptionally top. This included trickeries about what really is in the Russian inventories, the genuine state of the tactical hardware, and the quantity of troops they really have on the front lines. Presently let me 100% guarantee that, the Russian armed force actually got a serious punch, yet at the same time, it's not the military that we are persuaded to think, particularly when you see the numerous models that highlight their absence of May. Some might call what we are going to introduce episodic proof, yet we will let you be the appointed authority of the genuine condition of the second best armed force on the planet. Yet, how the Russo-Ukrainian conflict itself might have conceivably been an immediate consequence of foundational lying that is settled in inside the Russian government, isn't your thought process. How about we start with the greatest lie of every one of, that Russians are freeing authentic Russian lands from Ukraine's Nazi system, the alleged denazification and disarmament. The city of Kherson was the main regulatory focus that Russia figured out how to catch during their 2022 attack which they later attached and announced it Russian until the end of time. They even put banners all around the city, broadcasting that Russia is here until the end of time. Unexpectedly that didn't keep going long, on the grounds that on November 11th the Russian armed force was constrained by Ukrainians to withdraw toward the east bank of the Dnipro stream. As the Ukrainian powers entered Kherson, they were invited by the cheering Ukrainian populace. Scenes like this immediately flipped around the Russian mandate story, as it was guaranteed that 87% of the Kherson populace casted a ballot for joining Russia. Obviously not. Kherson was reclaimed by Ukraine, yet in addition numerous Russian wire channels became frustrated. Indeed, even back in spring of 2022, when Russia attacked Kherson, the nearby populace welcomed the aggressors not with blossoms and Russian banners, but rather with Ukrainian tones as they shouted at the Russians to return home. The Russian Service of Protection broadcasted that 100% of its soldiers and hardware were effectively moved to the opposite side of the stream, without leaving anything behind. I can't help but confess, this looks very coordinated the way Russian peeled off their stuff and swam exposed across the stream. As one would expect, Russian television depicts everything about the Russian military in the most ideal way. So for what reason don't we adjust it? Where and what the Russian warriors ate was perfect. In all actuality however, many were given food apportions with expiry dates in 2015. This is the way Russian fighters do their clothing, albeit actually, they are utilizing washing machines that were taken from Ukrainian homes. At the point when Russia proclaimed a fractional preparation back in September, it became clear that the 1.5 million outfits Russia had purchased and requested a long time back, existed exclusively on paper. That is the reason Russia encouraged their activated men to purchase their own garments and stuff, as in any case they risk getting shoes of various sizes, or some that date back to the 1940s, or on the other hand potentially nothing by any stretch of the imagination. The Russian military couldn't supply fighters with enough socks, quit worrying about head protectors or impenetrable vests. Indeed, even the scandalous Russian psychological oppressor Igor Strokov regularly runs crowdfunding efforts on his wire channel for fundamental hardware, similar to shoes. Discussing head protectors, there are various instances of what resembles a cap, yet as a general rule, it's not. I don't have the foggiest idea what to call this, yet this is most certainly not a battle protective cap. In certain occurrences, Russians have been discovered wearing 1950s caps which were repackaged with current covers. In different occurrences, the protective caps seem, by all accounts, to be put together with plastic. Returning to the tactical armor carriers, 
you will be fortunate to have one which has some sort of metal plate rather than cardboard or froth. With regards to the extents of the vests, once more you get what you get. There's other proof that focuses to the absence of essential gear for the Russian soldiers, like the realities that they have requested outfits from Belarus and Iran, as well as various crowdfunding efforts which supply Russian warriors with outfits, head protectors, vests and so on. With regards to weapons the circumstance isn't vastly improved. The unforgiving the truth is that Russia can't furnish its soldiers with an adequate number of value weapons outside of the television shoots. While Russians have a great deal of Soviet Kalashnikov programmed rifles, their condition is poor as may be obvious, yet, it deteriorates. During preparing, assembled men need to utilize mock weapons, since they just don't have an adequate number of genuine ones. Leaping to the front line, Ukrainians have found Russian soldiers utilizing corroded and outdated weapons. For instance, this is the Mosinagant rifle which traces all the way back to 1891. Indeed, it is as yet utilized in Russia, however just as a formal weapon. The lack of weapons on the front line implied this exceptionally old rifle came to the Ukrainian combat zone. This is really expected to be a fake, and why pick at an imitation, when the robots are not substantially more noteworthy? Russian television frequently shows recordings of Ohotnik covertness drones, however they are not even underway however. What is underway is Orlan 10 seemingly the best Russian surveillance drone with a sticker price of about $100,000. However, what's intriguing is what's inside these robots. The robots that were killed astounded Ukrainians, since they were outfitted with purchaser grade point and shoot cameras like Standard and Sony. Furthermore, the channel for the fuel was produced using a plastic soft drink bottle. Furthermore, obviously hardware inside were all Western made. That is some Russian assembling. Tanks on paper Russia has more than 10,000 tanks, yet, the vast majority of them are for possible later use, and odds are most won't begin. It was assessed that toward the start of the conflict Russia had a little more than 3,300 functional tanks. Quick forward to now, and Russia has lost almost 1,500 tanks in view of visual affirmation. So Russians had no other decision except for to pull the T-62 out of capacity, the ones that in fact could be begun. Since T-62s were created in the 1960s, it makes you can't help thinking about what sort of condition these 60-year-old tanks were kept in. Yet, pause. What about Russia's most up-to-date principal fight tank, the notorious T-14 Armada? What's more, that is a fair inquiry. We should simply express that in 2015, during the motorcade arrangements in Red Square, one armada slowed down. The reporter on the live transmission said that it was an arranged exhibition of towing military hardware. That is a first. In the end Russia chose to not efficiently manufacture T-14s. It was excessively exorbitant to refer to that the tank. Rather they delivered a set number of T-14s and modernized more seasoned Soviet tanks. Russian aviation-based armed forces with regards to the Russian aviation-based armed forces, very much like with the tanks, it looks perfect on paper. They have a little more than 1,100 fixed-wing contender and assault jets. Yet, consider this, the majority of the airplane are under-maintained, so some of them fall practical even without Ukrainian assistance. In the new months, various airplane have been lost because of hardware glitch even before they came to the Ukrainian combat zones. Yet, more regrettable, as indicated by Western Insight, almost certainly, Russia has more airplane than they have pilots, since preparing pilots is very costly. Russian pilots get a negligible part of flight time consistently, contrasted with their NATO partners. As per English Insight, Russian air battle preparing was vigorously prearranged and intended to dazzle senior authorities. The spending plan that should go toward legitimate preparation and advancement of Russia's own route frameworks, for example, GLONASS, which is essentially a Russian GPS, probably finished up elsewhere, on the grounds that among the destruction of Russian planes, Ukrainians regularly found shopper-grade GPS recipients, for example, Garmin or even cell phones, which Russian pilots would have needed to use because of the low quality of Russia's own route frameworks. No doubt, Russian pilots would tape business GPS recipients to their dashboard, 
Obviously when this humiliation became clear, the Russian service of protection began obscuring the cockpit dashboard to keep away from additional analysis. Then, at that point, there's the Russian plane carrying warship, Chief of Naval Operations Kuznetsov, which isn't an airplane transporter. It is delegated a weighty airplane cruiser. If not she wouldn't have the option to go through the Turkish waterways because of the Montreux show. In any case, this transporter alarms everyone, not just tree huggers, for self-evident reasons, yet additionally the pilots and the team locally available the boat. Naval Commander Kuznetsov is dependable to such an extent that it must be joined by a towing boat. As a rule, the transporter's drive framework separate in an ocean, driving it to be towed to the closest port. Chief of Naval Operations Kuznetsov is presently in the dry dock where in addition to other things, its drive frameworks are being supplanted. With regards to Russian rockets, in addition to the fact that they depend on Western hardware, they are additionally definitely less precise than we are persuaded to think. In a new survey, the U.S. Maritime Foundation presumed that Russia's cases with respect to their rocket exactness were misrepresented. Russians promoted an exactness of a couple of meters, however the truth was more similar to 30M to 50M. Moreover, Western knowledge proposes that Russian rockets experienced up to 60% disappointment rate during the beginning of the Ukraine war, which makes Russian rockets sound like Russian roulette. Truly, various Russian rockets have wouldn't travel to unfamiliar regions and simply cared about to return home. Taking everything into account, Ukrainian rockets some of the time likewise seem to go off kilter, as occurred on NOV 15th, when they wound up in Poland, killing two regular citizens. One more Russian tech with overstated execution is the S-400 air guard framework which was broadcasted by the maker to be equipped for capturing a Mars ordnance rockets. However, as may be obvious, that is plainly not the situation. Truth be told, the S-400 is still among the most able air guard frameworks in this present reality. Be that as it may, it's plainly not quite so fit as it's frequently seen to be. In any event, as per Igor Strelkov, the S-400 isn't compelling against huge Mars assaults. We should change gears to Ukrainian powers briefly. Nobody envisioned that Ukrainian powers could remain against an attack from Russia, comparable to what occurred with Crimea in 2014. Clearly, the Western assistance had a significant effect in 2022, and it's difficult to envision Ukrainian powers having the degrees of progress that they've had without the US and NATO. Yet, even without all the outer assistance, there is a vital contrast between Ukrainian troopers what's more, Russian soldiers. Ukrainians understand what they are battling for, and the equivalent can't be said for Russians. The Russian military is at present in similar state as the Ukrainian powers were back in 2014. Allow me to make sense of despite the fact that the Russian yearly military financial plan is around 1/10 that of the US military, Russia still spent more than 1 trillion dollar bucks throughout the course of recent years. 1 trillion dollar bucks is large chunk of change. However, where did that cash go? A major piece of the cash went to the Russian naval force. Russia fabricated two chief of naval operations Gorshkov class frigates, each costing 450 million dollar bucks. They likewise constructed three Chief of Naval Operations Grigorovich-class frigates with a unit cost of $430 million. Russia furthermore paid $250 million bucks for every one of its seven Spic and Span Corvettes, in addition to another $160 million bucks for every one of its two shiny new landing ships. And yet, Russian oligarchs with close connections to President Putin started fabricating their own armada the armada of super yachts. Allow me to specify a couple. Here is money manager Ailisher Usmanov's Dilbar Uber yacht. This is the previous Russian lead representative, Roman Abramovich's shroud, and this one is previous delegate administrator, Igor Sekin's Love Vero. While throughout recent years, Russia burned through $3.2 billion bucks assembling new warships, President Putin's oligarchs spent simply more than $4.1 billion bucks building their new super yachts. Yet, these Uber yachts are only a hint of something larger. Yachts are sufficiently huge for everybody to see. However, how much cash that has been taken from Russia's military and non-military financial plans is huge. 
This fundamental defilement is the justification for why Russian soldiers were getting touchy charges that had wood in them, rather than dynamite. This debasement is the reason the responsive reinforcement on Russian tanks was loaded up with elastic, all things being equal of dangerous charges. To this end Russians never appropriately put into the correspondence hardware, and got stuck utilizing old Soviet radios, and, surprisingly, Chinese walkie-talkies. This is Sergei Pugakyov, a previous dear companion of Vladimir Putin. During incalculable live streams, he has shared his accounts of what it resembled being a section of President Putin's internal circle. He asserts that in any event, during the Soviet Association times, in the last part of the 80s, everybody in the Soviet furthermore, thusly Russian military accepted that there could never be a conflict. However long there was atomic prevention, some sort of an equilibrium would kept up with, mean that regular conflicts were not required. As indicated by Pugakyov, President Putin never ready for this conflict, since battling a battle in Ukraine was essentially unthinkable. What I mean by that, will be that the core value and essential conviction of the Russian military officials was that for however long there is an atomic equilibrium, a regular conflict could never be required. Also, how could they accept in any case? After all, Russia walked into Crimea in 2014 and just guaranteed the grounds, without any repercussions. So I f there will never be going to be a conflict, why put resources into it? Why placed cash into reserves of protective caps, weapons and tactical armor carriers, when they could never be utilized? No one in the Russian military imagined the size of the conflict that they are currently seeing in Ukraine. So the spending plan was basically taken and went towards super yachts, dachas and different extravagances. Be that as it may, on the off chance that President Putin didn't need a conflict, and was never ready for it, for what reason did he begin a conflict with Ukraine? Well he didn't. He began an exceptional military activity, where the Russian armed force was supposed to walk into the Ukrainian capital with negligible obstruction where paid Russian allies would welcome the soldiers with blossoms and Russian banners. Both Russian misleading publicity, and, surprisingly, the Belarusian president, guaranteed on television that Ukraine will be required very quickly. Indeed, even Americans initially gave Ukraine under 96 hours and, surprisingly, proposed to empty President Zelensky, to which he broadly answered the battle is here. I want ammo, not a ride. I surmise jokesters are not entertaining all of the time. Throughout recent years, President Putin emptied billions of dollars into individuals like the Ukrainian oligarch, Viktor Medvchuk, who should coordinate supportive of Russian developments all over Ukraine. Also, that is where the genuine incongruity lies. The cash that should support favorable to Russian developments across Ukraine was taken, something similar way that the Russian military spending plan was. As per Pugakyov, Russia has burned through huge number of dollars funding the previous individual from Ukrainian parliament, Viktor Medvchuk, previous leader of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych. Furthermore, seriously during the previous many years, President Putin was mostly certain, possibly by mistake, that individuals whom he was paying to lay out a supportive of Russian development, were going about their responsibilities, getting ready Ukraine for a takeover. After all, President Putin's just believed wellspring of data is his inward circle, some of whom were getting compensated by him. Obviously, those individuals were offering him the go-ahead. It's all around great. We are prepared to turn out to be important for Russia. Very much like Crimea. Acquire the soldiers. The frightening part is that the way of life of exists in the Russian media, military and government was solid to the point that it shows up even individuals in control began trusting their own untruths, that they could assume control over Ukraine very quickly. Indeed, even the West succumbed to Russian falsehoods. In February of 2022, President Putin requested his soldiers into Ukraine, where Russian warriors were welcomed by Ukrainians, not with blossoms and Russian banners, but rather with N regulations and spears. The rest is history. In talking about history, this is the Tsar Ringer, which was made by request of the Russian ruler, Anna Iowanovna in 1730. The chime was made so individuals would recollect her standard. Bear in mind, it was never utilized as a real chime. 
This is the Tsar Cannon which was made in 1586 by request of the Russian Tsar, Fifor Iovanovich, in his acknowledgement, despite the fact that, it was not terminated a solitary time. This is the send-off of the Russian hypersonic float vehicle, Avangard, which can convey both atomic and traditional payloads. Going at velocities of up to Mach 27, Russia asserts that Avangard can change its speed furthermore, bearing to outsmart rocket protection frameworks, something that long-range rockets can't do. Russia guarantees that it would take something like 50 SM-3 rockets to kill one Avangard skim vehicle. This is the Russian Poseidon atomic torpedo, which Russia charges can go at speed of up to 100 bunches, at a profundity of 3,280 feet, and has a limitless reach. Poseidon can convey an atomic warhead with a yield of up to 100 megatons, recommending that assuming that exploded close to the shores of the UK, it would create a wave 1,600 feet tall which would lower the whole UK under radioactive water. This is the stuff that they show on Russian public television. If you were to ask me, Avangard and Poseidon will have a comparative destiny as the cannon and the chime. After all, President Putin said it himself in a meeting, we are not wanting to battle a conflict with anybody, we want to make a discernment so no one remembers to battle us. Also, to this end the Russian military, isn't your thought process.